Hey, Snackers, this is Kareem Iskander. Hey, everyone, Matt Napoli here. Welcome to episode 192 of Snack Minute. Kareem, this week, MCP, MCP, MCP. I feel like that's all, all we talk, talk about. about. <laughs> that's all we talk about. But this week, we're going to add on to some of the stuff that we talked about already. I think you got the Meraki stuff that we kind of talked about before, but you're adding on Splunk layer, right? Yeah, we're, we're building a use case now, like a very relevant use case. Like a proper, okay, I'm, I'm excited to see how this plays out. Um, cause I haven't seen, I haven't seen this yet. I haven't read your blog. <laughs> Basically anything you do, I ignore. <laughs> exactly. And that's why I'm like, you read my blogs, Matt? That's, that's surprising. <laughs> no, I only knew you did a blog because you told me you did a blog, but. <laughs> and I probably sent you the link and I asked you to read it and you didn't read it. That is not true. <laughs> okay. But I digress. I'm excited to see the use case. Um, so let's jump right in, in the, a classic man cream episode. Yeah. So I'm actually going to open us up with this. I, okay. I purposely, you know, this slide, you probably built this slide we, we, uh, between five. We I probably put no, slides just like everything. I stole this slide. <laughs> <laughs> okay. But I know. Yeah, we, I mean, we Hank, purpose... Hank built this slide. <laughs> okay. So credit to Hank. He built the slide, but w at some point. If you're following us since our dev, my DevNet days, you've seen the slides somewhere in our talks. Oh, and I've, I've talked about it uh, about a hundred times myself. You've you've talked about a hundred times yourself. So yes, so make it make it a hundred and one. Talk talk to okay. us about the slide a little bit, Matt. This is this is the last time that we talk about it. So this was our um, attempt to, and I, I think we did a relatively good job with it collectively as DevNet. I don't mean me and you individually. Um, but this was our way to start to introduce um, DevOps tooling into network operations and being able to say, here, here's the tool chain. Here's how we go from um, leveraging Git as our source of truth, pushing things through um, Ansible to do our updates, making sure we're testing in certain spaces. I see that Vagrant icon on there. I haven't heard of, of, for, about Vagrant in about five years. So, yeah. And then some of the other elements that we built within Cisco around viral, now CML, and then ultimately being able to track all that within a messaging. And uh, that used to be when we were um, calling it WebEx Teams, I think. And now it's what, just WebEx. So <laughs> all the icons are familiar, familiar, and a lot of them um, have gone by the wayside. And, and, and the important part of all of this is when we're talking about network operation and network engineers, we said, hey, treat your network as code and work on your configuration management and have a single source of truth for your configuration management to kind of avoid that configuration drift, right? right? And so putting this pipeline together was a way with a source of truth to, to manage all of that. But then fast forward, what, 20, 25 now, and things have changed. And we've introduced AI and agentic AI and AI all. So you're saying more has changed than just the icons on this slide. <laughs> well, the icons stayed the same. Well, we've updated them. Viral doesn't exist. Although the cool, it was really cool uh, that we called it viral. Now it's CML. <laughs> uh, but if we was look it cool? at it, it, it <laughs> now with the introduction to of MCP, that pipeline has changed a little bit. And Carl mm -hmm. has to upskill and learn something new, which is, how to build these MCP servers or what they are, which we've talked to you about at Snackers for, you know, many, many times. But now that that we have this use case defined, we can bring in MCP and things become flat where Carl doesn't have to handle a lot of the, the interactions and a, a lot of the work that's happening in the pipeline. All Carl needs to do is define the MCP servers and be able to prompt the model to do what he wants it to do for from a configuration management perspective. Yeah. So now it's become it's becoming flat. You have an MCP server that integrates with GitHub, and you have an MCP server that interacts with Ansible, and an MCP server that talks about CML, which is something that we are going to cover also, uh, and on our next episode of Snack Minute for you, Snackers, it's going to be super cool. And then also an MCP server to send notifications. So mm -hmm. all of that is just provided to the model. Carl interacts with it and job's done and, 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 and the AI handles the rest for you. That's all true, Kareem. And uh, from a functional day-to-day -day aspect of Carl's life, um, it does flatten out for sure. 
uh, and it makes that, that those interactions easier. But I don't want to necessarily trivialize building those MCP servers or consuming those MCP servers within your pipeline. There still is some front end work that has to occur to put those into your workflow and work stream. So once that's in place, though, certainly we do have now this process that has it you know, has an abstraction layer of AI on top of it, which is the exciting part. But I want to make sure that um, our snackers understand that there's some work that goes into that MCP portion of that diagram. Um, and it might be done by someone else. Like the GitHub ones are going to be done by Microsoft, right? Yeah. The CML ones are probably going to be done by Cisco. Uh, but in certain instances, we do have to understand how we're consuming them. Um, so the learning portion of this is going to, uh, uh, in understanding how to tie the MCP services into the pipeline. Um, and that part, that's the interesting part for me and you because we're the ones that are building those pipelines out, but the users are gonna have a way better experience going forward. Absolutely, and and but but also to add to that, Matt, the core skills that we've been talking about, understanding Git, knowing how to use Ansible, just because you, you front end the, the MCP server to all of this, it doesn't mean that your core skills go away. No, 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 no. Because you still got to be able to understand like, hey, did the MCP server execute properly what I asked it to do? You got to understand that, did, is this Ansible script actually running properly and 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 managing my configuration as as a, as a it should? So that knowledge doesn't go away. We're just building on top of it. And, and you've hit on that spot on. Well, and the, heurist, the heuristic that I go from in, in all of this is the LLM, the MCP servers, the whole conglomeration of AI tooling, you treat them as if they're a very, very new junior engineer, junior dev. You'd have to check that work. Yeah. But that, that rote responsibility is now being pushed off on there like you would to a junior dev. And that's kind of the... The cool thing is that now we can and they can work all day, every day. <laughs> yeah. So those those are the opportunities there. But I, yeah, those those core responsibilities and understanding that definitely can't go away. I mean, that's an excellent point, Kareem. Exactly. And so and you're spot on with everything you said. But let's let's go back to the conversation. Now, we've been talking to you about, you know, configuration drift. Forty five percent of all network uh, related outages is due to configuration drift. And mm -hmm. so when we were set out to talk about the net devops we told you right go find a single source of truth to document your your configuration for your network uh, automatically deploy that configuration and push it out push it down to your network test it first and push it down to your network as well as in order to see what's going on with your configuration add some type of observability observability to it and this is where splunk comes in play right yeah so okay. if we if you know, if taking this this use case in mind, if we were to set out and let's let's pretend that this is a use case for our, one of our customers, right? We have, and we've seen this, uh, Matt, with many of the customers we've worked with. Of course, yeah. Going multi multi sites of Meraki network, you have uh, ten thousand devices plus. Uh, your organization has a single source of truth, which is Netbox or whatever flavor of Netbox you choose. Um, your automating that configuration. So you're building that pipeline that we talked about uh, using things like webhooks, Python code, or maybe webhooks with Ansible, you know, what Carl was doing from a net DevOps perspective. Um, and then you have that audit log in Splunk, right? And so putting it all together for this, this is what we would, it would essentially look like. You would have Netbox, uh, any changes that you apply to Netbox would go out to some middleware, uh, that middleware you would have to have the logic in there to decide what configuration, which API endpoint, or which uh, you know the Ansible playbook itself would would de define where it you know the the switch would change or the MX would change in the in in dashboard in Meraki dashboard itself, and then some notification gets fired off from Meraki to Splunk as well as whenever a configuration changes in that box. All of these are event driven. Uh, automation. So we're using webhooks. Events are getting fired left and right. You define the endpoints, and and voila, right? You have you have a perfectly uh, working uh, pipeline. At the same time, this is a perfect world, and we don't live in the perfect world. And so, <laughs> you know, we all know Quinn. Enter Quinn. Uh, I know Quinn. You know Quinn. Quinn has been on forever. Quinn does not follow follow the rules at all. So um, he doesn't like to log into Netbox to ch make changes. 
even though we told him many times, go do it. So <laughs> Quinn just is cool and he logs into Meraki dashboard directly and changes the configuration, saves it, it's a Friday night, and leaves. Before you know it, your operation Steam gets a ticket from you know whatever, and it says, "Hey, BGP is down. You you just lost an entire site." So there must be a way to do this. If you, without AI, without MCP, you would essentially go in and have to look at the logs from one end to the other, cross-examine, mm -hmm. figure out what changed, go back to Netbox, figure out the the, the source of truth, um, as well as push that, you know, have a, some type of script to push all the, the changes where you have to handle all the logs. Long story right. short, it's it's a lot of work, right? And mm -hmm. you're on, on a time crunch, you got to get it up. So um, this is where the AI can excel. For and so if we change this model and we bring in the MCP, we can just have the AI do it, right? And this is where essentially that use case turned in super flat. You have Carl managing the host an mcp host and we've covered what that is and you have three different clients one for meraki one for netbox and one for splunk and then you have the host managing the three uh agents that or the mcp clients somewhat agents and um you essentially just have it prompt it to see what change and whatnot and this is what i'm going to show you today this is making sense yeah this is all making sense and i see i totally see where you go with it to be fair to Quinn, because uh, he's not here to defend himself, <laughs> he would never do that. <laughs> but, but we have to pick on him. So, but, cartoon, you know, but cartoon Quinn totally would do that. <laughs> <laughs> and and to be fair, I did pass Ooh. this uh, use case by Quinn and he approved. I so know, I know. <laughs> he knows, he knows. All right, so if you're looking at this, Matt, I, I just made, mm -hmm. I, I pretended that I'm Quinn. I logged into the dashboard here. I have I have a sandbox instance. I changed configuration on my uh, Meraki switch. I gave it a different name. Uh, I changed the LAN IP address and uh, gateway, something super simple. And when I made the changes, they fired off events to Splunk and you're seeing a Splunk log here. Now, yeah. if I want to revert back, I have to figure out what was the previous um, configuration is. I have to log into my NetBox and do all of that. Or mm -hmm. I can just introduce the host that is connected to my both of my MCP servers. Um, so if I go here and I, you can see I'm using a Claude desktop. And you can mm -hmm. see here I have an MCP server that's Meraki and it does the basic CRUD for Meraki for me. And what's really cool and I'd like to point out when I built this Meraki MCP server, there was no logic. We've talked about this in our previous episode. Yeah, we, we, I remember doing that in the previous episode. Yeah, there was zero logic. So I didn't have to, in, it, it inferences the, the knowledge it knows from the documentation of Meraki, it being the LM, mm -hmm. uh, to, to make those calls, right? And then from there, we are looking at the Splunk MCP server and, and Yesterday, I, it was brought to my attention that there is a an add-on in Splunk base for your MC uh, that's an MCP server. So Splunk has released their own MCP server. I used cool. an open source Splunk uh, MCP server. Okay, so I'm looking at this model here and uh, I'm gonna ask it again. Uh, I need to see what's happening with my Meraki network. Can you show me? So first, these are tools that are available from the MCP server for, for Splunk. And so it looked like it, it went in and did the search. It, it brought back the log um, <laughs> and, it, and it showed me that, hey, um, I've made some unauthorized changes. Mm -hmm. And this is, I just changed this before our episode. Um, and you can see what was going on. Now, because those changed, it knows what changed. I can actually ask it, um, say something like, okay, well, you should have made any changes. This is unacceptable. Show me side by side um, what's actually happening. And because it has all of the data in coming from yeah. the MC, Flunk MCP, it creates this side by side really cool report, incident report for me. And it showed me exactly what's happened, right? The, the device name, the switch uh, uh, IP address, and the gateway has changed. And now, also, because it has access to the Meraki MCP server that could apply and revert the changes, I could say, let's go back and revert what's happened and fix that. 
And if I, it's going to go in and update the devices, it knows which endpoints because it has access to the tools. Mm -hmm. And if I go back to, if I go back to my Meraki here and I refresh, it changed my main switch <clears throat> back to its original name and it reverted back to the IP addresses that is supposed to happen. Now, Perfect. the, the, I didn't introduce, uh, it only used uh, uh, Splunk's logs to for all of this. I didn't introduce okay. uh, my source of truth, which is... Uh, well, that's what's going to be box. my next question. How did it know which IP addresses to revert to? Is it only because it looked at the Splunk logs and saw what it changed from and then back to? Okay. And, and, and also, yes, and because Meraki, when they send out an event with the changes, it and part of the JSON payload, that that's plunk it has, has the original to, value exactly and it shows it. you okay. old value and new value in in the in this so it went based on that but if you didn't have this this is where you bring in the mcp and that us into the mix and that might be i mean just to play uh, a little bit of like what's the co completeness a little bit what a, what would be correct we should in in theory add in the netbox source of truth um, because that's what should be reflected because we could run into situations where two changes are made and we didn't get to them in time. Yep. Then we're still not in line with our appropriate value. Or we use the data from Splunk quickly and then do a check against Netbox or something to that effect. Oh, this is an important point, point Matt, before yeah. you jump on. Like the next yeah, yeah. point is this is 100% right. Like it, you need to make sure that happens. Also, if we take the 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 pipeline that we talked about uh, in the beginning of the episode, that pipeline, you should also test the, that configuration against against CML. And oh, for this, sure. Yeah. This is where the CML uh, MCP server comes in play, right? And so okay. you could do all of that as part of this. Which we'll learn about more in a, in a few episodes here. Yes. What I was going to say <laughs> is that my favorite part of this whole demo is how snarky yeah. the AI was. Because <laughs> the key the key is this guy, Kareem, made more in capital letters <laughs> unauthorized changes, which means you've already done it once and it's kept uh, it's kept track of the fact that you are a rogue entity in this scenario. <laughs> I love that. That is so cool. Yes. So this is it. It's a really useful use case. It's very simple to get started with. Um, code, everything is out there. So snackers, make sure you check it out. You know, Kareem, I, I have to say, I really appreciate the way that you've been taking this um, on because you've been layering on some of the foundational aspects of um, what we need to understand around MCP, around leveraging the LLMs, how we tie that stuff together. And this is what I've always liked about the work that you do is you're tying it to real live use cases that... Um, our audience really loves, right? It's it, we, we have to be thinking about how are the practitioners going to be using these things in the real world and how is it saving us work and headache and all that stuff. And I think this is, I mean, this is one of the best ones I've seen so far of leveraging these kinds of tools in a way that um, makes sense to every network engineer that's watching these videos. So thank, thank you for that, man. I just want to say great work on this. Yeah, thanks for saying that. Appreciate it, man. Snackers, uh, go check out Cream's blog. I'm going to read it now. <laughs> I'm going to take that as my action item away from today. In that, it sounds like he gives you all of the tools and uh, steps necessary to start to build this out on your own. Um, and uh, we'll see you guys next time. Thanks, Matt. Thank you, Snackers. Snackers.